Most know by now that electronic medical records got a boost in President Obama's stimulus package, $19 billion to be precise to incentivize hospitals and doctors to get moving. Currently, fewer than 20% of hospitals and 25% of physicians' offices are fully automated. The administration believes that moving the dial on this would have a triple benefit, better coordination of care, fewer errors, and lower treatment costs. But what may or may not happen at your local hospital or in your doctor's office is less dramatic and far-reaching than what is already occurring in homes across America. I'm talking about patients beginning to organize their own care and seeking out customized information to assist decision-making with the assistance of health entrepreneurs. They're bringing order to a new type of therapy called IX, or information therapy. IX is information-centered, but it's also relationship-rich. Let's take a look at a few cases. To begin with, there's Kaiser Permanente's Nonprofit Center for Information Therapy. As its director, Paul Wallace, says, Information therapy can help bridge the transition from doctors doing things to and for people to helping them become active participants in their own health care. One of the center's offerings is the My Health Manager website, which streams and organizes your health data, reminds and instructs, provides key information, and allows for two-way online communications with your clinician. Seattle's Group Health and other care systems around the country are following the lead and providing secure platforms where a health consumer can collect and organize their own vital health information. This shifting locus of power and ownership is significant enough, but a second group of health entrepreneurs are taking it one step further. Partnering with various information platform giants, these companies are arming up consumers with targeted information. Three quick examples. HealthWise of Boise, Idaho, a licensor of health information to WebMD, has developed customized information programs including interactive slideshows and online dialogue for patients who have suffered heart attack or diabetes or other chronic conditions. They've even ventured into mental health, designing their information therapy conversations for Harvard's Pilgrim Healthcare, whose patients suffer from depression, sleeping disorders, or chronic pain. Now, Vitality Group takes a different approach, incentivizing healthy behaviors. If a subscriber participates in risk assessment and completes online information and health behavior mo modules, they get Vitality Bucks, redeemable for products and services. And finally, there's Walters Kluwer's Up to Date, a site with 340,000 physician customers. They direct their patients to the site for access to the latest guidelines on treatments for many conditions. Some doctors even offer their patients a free month service valued at $19.95 a month for those in special need of information therapy. So what we're seeing on the leading edge of the health consumer revolution are the early signs that our healthcare leaders are finally beginning to understand the power of health information technology to connect, converge, and collaborate. And rather than be possessive about it, they're finding ways to share the health information platform with their patients. In fact, on April 22, 2009 in Boston, the Health 2.0 community and the IX community are joining hands in a convergence conference. That's a smart move because left alone, these technologies could easily drive a wedge between the people and the people caring for the people. But by reaching out, physicians and other caregivers move technology from being a double check on each other to becoming a double connect to each other. And in the process, cost should go down and quality should go up. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.